Hey, welcome to Whitefields Community Church Sermon Extra. It's great to have you with us once again. I'm here with Pastor Nick Cady, who is the pastor of Whitefields Community Church here in Lama, Colorado. And we have spent the past couple weeks in the book of Romans in Romans chapter 6. And Paul, once again, he has brought up the topic of law and how law and grace work together and how we relate to those two. And he's, he, he has, a, I'll read you a couple of verses here, just to give us context for our question today. But uh, chapter 6, verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall, uh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live in sin live in it any longer. And then, of, of course, in verse 14, he also says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you, you are not under law, but under grace. And then, verse 15, he says, What then shall we sin, because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. And on Sunday, Nick, you made this uh, interesting statement in regard to how we are to relate to the law while living under grace, and use this phrase, liberating constraints and enslaving freedoms. And uh, what does that mean? What, what it means is that this is actually the nature of all freedom. If you think about freedom, even in a country when we talk about having freedom, or if you think about it in, in regard to being free people, meaning that we're not under the power of anything uh, that we're enslaved by, uh, in, inherent to the idea of freedom is always there are certain constraints which enable freedom. And that's an interesting concept, especially um, in the way that a lot of people think about it. So the theological terms we use for this are legalism and antinomianism. So these are kind of two ditches on either side of the road, you could say. And we, we want to avoid both of them because they're both um, not biblical and they're, they're anti-gospel. So on the one hand, legalism is the one that gets maybe more press, right? Like we talk about that a lot more. Uh, legalism is when you try to relate to God based on your own performance, keeping certain rules and laws and thinking that if you do these, then God will accept you or he will bless you. Like if I, if I do this, then God will do this for me in return. Um, that is a legalistic attitude. You're relating to God on the basis of law. Now, antinomianism comes from a Latin anti against nomianism. It refers to the law. So it's it's being against the law, which means that you basically view the law as something very bad. Um, but, but that's also wrong because in that case, people would say exactly what he's saying here. Hey, we're not under the law. We're under grace. And so, you know, sin isn't really that big of a deal because Jesus said it's finished. So my, you know, if I sin, well, who cares, right? Like, so sometimes the end justifies the means. And if the means is sinning, then so be it. And so there's this kind of thing. And what Paul's saying is, no, just because we're under grace and not under the law, that doesn't just give us a license to sin. In fact, he says in Jude that it's godless people who use the grace of God as a license for immorality. And so um, what it means is that the law of God, as he's going to get into in chapter 7, actually does have a role in our lives in the sense that it tells us um, what God likes and what God doesn't like and kind of gives us a playbook for, for living in God's ways. But the idea of restraints being liberating is really interesting in the Bible because uh, James refers to the law of God, referring back to the Old Testament law, mm -hmm. and he calls it the law that gives freedom or the law which liberates. And that's generally not how we think about law. We tend to think about law as something which is very constraining and binding, not as something which liberates. But my point is just to say, and I think it's very inherent to the scriptures, that the law of God is that which liberates us from a lot of things. It liberates us from foolishness. It liberates us from bondage. Because that's kind of Paul's point here in Romans chapter 6 is that sin is not something you can mess with. It is something which if you give yourself over to it, it will enslave you and it will trap you and you will suffer as a result. In other words, I, I like to use this phrase, sin isn't bad because it's forbidden. Sin is forbidden because it's bad. And I think when we understand it in that way, this all makes sense. So one example of a liberating constraints and um, enslaving freedoms. So I used to work with homeless people uh, at one point in my life in downtown Denver before I 
moved to Hungary. I was a young guy and I kind of got thrust into this ministry where I was leading groups downtown to reach out to homeless people. And as part of this, you know, we, we would talk with them a lot. You know, we'd bring them food and we'd sit with them and we'd chat. And what I found is that a, a large percentage of them were homeless by choice. And their reason why they were homeless was because they felt that homelessness gave them a large degree of freedom, right? Like they didn't have any bills to pay. They didn't have anybody tell them what to do. They didn't have to show up anywhere on time. So they felt that that is a form of freedom. The irony of it, though, is that in this freedom, they're completely at the mercy of other people. In other words, they're completely dependent on other people's charity, kindness, and, you know, being nice to them and giving them things. So in that sense, they're not really free because they're completely dependent. When you're completely dependent on something, then you're not a free person. So in order to be free, oh, and, and furthermore, they, there were plenty of places where they were not allowed to go. So they were restricted. So that freedom came with certain restrictions. And the question is, which was, which was better for them and which is better for us? Certain freedoms will always lead to certain restrictions. Certain restrictions might lead to certain freedoms. And so we have to balance these two. And really what it's saying here, I guess the gist of it is that the law of God liberates us in the sense that if you follow them, not as out of a legal relationship with God where you're trying to earn his, his blessing or stay in his good graces. But if you do these things, you will live as a free person. You will be free from the consequence of sin. Uh, you know, like if you do certain things, there are always consequences, whether or not you get punished for them. I, I read an interesting, I guess, analogy on this, which maybe not even analogy, just a great explanation of it, which was from Martin Lloyd-Jones. And what he said is that you can think of it more in terms of sinning against the laws of a state versus sinning against your wife or your husband in a marriage relationship. So if I sin against the law of the state, there will be legal ramifications. I might lo lose certain legal status or, or something might happen to me on a legal level. Um, but if I sin against my spouse, I, I may not be breaking a law, but I will be breaking their heart. And in a relationship, that matters a lot to me. If I have a relationship with someone I love, I won't necessarily be losing my legal status as my wife's husband, but I will be hurting the one I love. And really, that's what it's describing here. Why does sin matter? Well, because first of all, we're not in bondage to it anymore. We've been set free in Christ. Now He is our master and our Lord, the one that we answer to. But beyond that, we're in a relationship with him. Uh, so number one, it hurts us. But number two, it hurts the one we love, the one who has given himself for us. So why would we do that, in other words? Yeah. No, it's, it's very interesting. And, and I, I wonder why, why Christians, many times, they relate to the law differently in, in, in their spiritual lives than they do in everyday lives. Because you think about... The fact that in the world that we live in today, we are constrained by many things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you and I, having lived in the United States and having lived abroad, you know, just those white lines on the road, they bring a lot of freedom to us, the United States, because I can drive down the road and feel free that the guy on the other side is not going to hit me. But you go over to the east where the idea of lane integrity is gone completely. Yeah. You're not sure... Who's going to do what and when and how they're going to change lanes and the sense of uh, you know anxiety that you feel by not having those little white lines constraining you. There is zero freedom. You're in fear. And then, what are your thoughts maybe on the fact that 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 Christians seem to relate to spiritual things differently than they maybe relate to to the way we live our everyday lives? Yeah, I think it comes down to this idea, and that's very ingrained, maybe not just in our culture, but in human culture, that we want autonomy. We want autonomy, but yet we don't think it through as to, is autonomy actually good for me? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, and so that was our big point on Sunday. This past Sunday was that autonomy from God actually leads to bondage. I mean, it was not really our point. It was the point from the text. And that um, to really be truly free is to submit yourself to God as Lord. Uh, I think that's important. I mean, as for why we relate to uh, things in our life and things spiritually differently, I'm not sure exactly why people do that, but it would make a lot more sense if we thought it through. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, and, and Paul, of course, he just brings that all back to us that we are then free to surrender to the Lord because ultimately we are going to be submitted 
to a Lord in our lives. Yeah. And and Paul says, I'm going to be a bondservant of Christ. I'm going to take my freedom and I'm going to submit myself to the righteousness of Christ. And so, yeah, definitely some really interesting uh, things to think about. If you've missed our sermons on, on these Sundays, especially in Romans chapter 6, we just encourage you to go to the website, whitefieldschurch.com. You can download them there and encourage you to take a listen. And uh, we invite your questions and your comments. And we just love to, to talk with you about these things. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And uh, may God bless you and love to uh, see you again next time. Mm-hmm.